For years, with the blessing of the Soviet authorities, the Tchaikovsky family has strictly controlled Clean in the archives, shielding the composer's reputation from the outside world with a ruthless dedication. It seems the ideas of Glasnost haven't quite filtered through to them yet. As a refusenik, I'm beginning to feel some sympathy with those skeptics who believe there is something about Tchaikovsky's death that's being held back from his biographers. If he did catch cholera by drinking a glass of water, it would have come from the river Neva here in St. Petersburg, which in 1893 was the source of the city's drinking water. The river was known to be contaminated as there was already a serious epidemic of Asiatic cholera, but we're asked to believe that Tchaikovsky blithely ignored all the warnings. There are two accounts of where and when Tchaikovsky is supposed to have drunk the fatal glass. One says it happened here in this restaurant, then known as Liner's. On the evening of Tuesday the 1st of November, Tchaikovsky came here with friends after the theatre. It's said that he asked the waiter for a glass of water. When told there was no treated water, he demanded some anyway. His brother Modest arrived just as he was drinking it. Well, that is what his nephew, Yuri Davidov, said he saw happen. But his brother Modest makes no mention of it. In fact, Modest says unequivocally that Tchaikovsky drank the fatal glass of water in his apartment the next day. And, of course, Modest's version has been accepted as the official one. So we must examine it seriously. Modest Tchaikovsky, the composer's youngest brother, was his constant companion in later life and became his first biographer. Pyotr Ilyich was the second of five brothers with one sister, the children of Ilya Petrovich Tchaikovsky, a prosperous mining engineer, and his second wife, Alexandra Andreevna, an amateur musician of French extraction. It was a comfortable upbringing in the bosom of a large family, shattered by the trauma of his mother's death from cholera when he was only 14. Tchaikovsky never got over it. Two other women played a lasting role in his life, Antonina Milyukova, to whom he made a disastrous marriage in 1877, and Nadezhda von Meck, his patron for 14 years. Though they shared one of the great correspondences of musical history, they never, at her request, actually met. Beyond those letters and his diaries, our main source for the facts of Tchaikovsky's life remains Modest, an unsuccessful playwright. Modest lived in the apartment at the top of this block, and it was in this apartment that Tchaikovsky died. Modest said that he and his brother returned here from Liners around 1 a.m. on the morning of Wednesday the 2nd of November. It was the last time Tchaikovsky climbed these stairs. At lunch that day he drank a glass of unboiled water from a jug on the table. Within hours he developed the symptoms of cholera. The apartment is now a communal flat housing four families. I asked to see the kitchen where Modest's glass of water would have come from. It's now a communal bathroom. Mother says that Tchaikovsky drank a glass of unboiled water during lunchtime. And by 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock, nobody knows, but Tchaikovsky developed a very um, bad feeling, you know, and he said, something is wrong with my stomach. Actually, he came to lunch, not uh, in a very good state already. But cholera could not develop so fast. Secondly, Medez said that his brother was not afraid of cholera. Now, that is patent nonsense. Their mother had died of cholera, and elsewhere Medez says that all his life his brother was afraid of cholera. But thirdly, what was a glass of unboiled water doing on Medez's dining table?
there is evidence that points out that there isn't enough symptoms uh, that he died of cholera, but it doesn't just doesn't fit properly. For four days, Tchaikovsky lay in this room in appalling pain, convulsed by violent spasms, vomiting and diarrhea. He was attended by a team of four doctors led by the Bertensen brothers, Vasily, the family doctor, and Liev, the Tsar's personal physician, who made the diagnosis of cholera. But cholera was a disease of the poor, and Liev Bertensen, a high society general practitioner, later admitted that he'd never previously seen one case. There are other disturbing aspects. A stream of visitors came and went. At times there were as many as a dozen people around the dying composer, strictly against the cholera regulations of the day. Isolation of cholera patients should be effected either in the homes where they have fallen ill or by removal of the patient from his home to a medical institution. The bodies of those who have died from cholera should be wrapped in a shroud and insofar as possible placed quickly in the coffin. It seems Modest and the doctors paid little attention to these regulations. And there is something else that bothers me. If Tchaikovsky died in such terrible pain, why does his death mask show the face of someone who looks like he died peacefully in his sleep? One shouldn't forget that a corpse is always cosmetically treated. The wrinkles are smoothed out. The face is powdered to present the corpse for a farewell. So the face is always decorated a little. After Tchaikovsky's death, his friend the composer Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov looked on in horror as a famous cellist kissed the corpse all over the face. Tchaikovsky's sudden end, he went on, occasioned all kinds of gossip and rumour around St. Petersburg. The doctor's account says that Tchaikovsky died during the Saturday night. Modest that he died during the Sunday night. And Modest has always been accepted as the official one. Now, I am wondering whether we shouldn't accept the doctor's account and that during the next 24 hours behind closed doors, all necessary measures were taken to conceal the truth about Tchaikovsky's death, whatever that truth may have been. Whatever the cause of his death and accidental cholera is looking highly unlikely to me, Tchaikovsky was given the grandest of state funerals, paid for by the Tsar himself. Thousands lined the streets of St. Petersburg to pay their last respects to the man they regarded as their national composer. He lay in state here in Kazan Cathedral, the first civilian in Russian history to receive such an honor. They took him in an open coffin to Alexander Nevsky Lavra Cemetery, the most honorable spot in the city, and all this for a man who died of cholera? This just couldn't have been. So the cause of his death was clearly something else, and what's more, any other cause of death, say suicide from weakness or from disappointment, would have to have been concealed. Yuri Nagibin had a point, I thought, and my Russian researcher had found some interesting church evidence in the state archives. This is the certificate of burial in the Alexander Nevsky Cemetery. Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky was buried on the 28th of October, 1893. He's got a second rank grave, which cost 200 rubles. This is all standard stuff, but here, it says he died of cholera, buried by permission of the Tsar, but this is a church document, signed by three unknown churchmen from St. Pantelimon Church, dated three days later. A document from a little unknown church, which Tchaikovsky had nothing to do with, saying he died of cholera, giving no further details. 